All right, so when Visual Studio opens, it has lots of uh, little things around it over here. You're going to see there's a server explorer, many different things in here. The only thing that you need is Solution Explorer so you can close everything else. Okay? Essentially, what I mean is that when you look at your Visual Studio over here, is it the one? Yeah. Let me just, uh, you can close everything. You see Server Explorer? You don't need that. Close it. Toolkit? You don't need that. Notifications? You don't need that. All these things you can close. In the lab, you don't need to do this because every single time it's going to forget what you have done. It's going to start it as a thing. But when you're installing it at home, do it so you don't have that garbage coming up. Every single thing that comes up, because it's not what we want to do. It's just extra tasks that is running by your uh, uh, vis uh, visual study, and you don't want, to do want it to be available. So now, so Solution Explorer is uh, the only thing that you need to, uh, to have. If you put that pin thingy over there, it's going to stay at left. Depending on how big of your, your screen is, uh, you can have this pinned, or you can have it to slide back out. Um, what is a solution? First of all, what is IDE? Okay, IDE is an integrated development environment. What does it do? It Have you ever been to, I don't know, Wendy's, and you say, I want combo number one? And it comes with the fries and a burger, and you get everything it's because you're lazy to mention all the things one by one. It's the same thing like that. Everything comes in this. It has the compiler. It has a virtual dev development environment. It has a little uh, uh, packed place that uh, kind of simulates the operating system. It has debugging tools. Everything is in here. It's integrated in it. It's very helpful. It has lots of uh, little tools that help you uh, write programs. Um, you need to learn it. That's why we're starting with this. All right? A solution that you see always as Solution Explorer is essentially a pack of 50 different projects. Let's say you want to, we're not going to do it in this semester, I'm just going to give you an example. You want to create an e-commerce solution for a for a, a store. So you want to have a point of sale with cashiers, at the same time a website, uh, an advertisement thingy. So you have five different projects that you have to deal with it. You put them all in one solution. We just want to print 10 numbers, that's it. So solution for us is not necessary. We only need one project, and I'll tell you how we do it. Okay? Keep that in mind. Now, to, because it's an integrated development environment, unlike Linux, Windows, you cannot, sorry, unlike Linux, uh, on this one, you have to have everything in a project. Okay? Uh, we'll do something after this on, uh, on Linux, and you'll see what the difference is. Okay? Uh, hopefully, everybody have their matrix accounts, right? And if you don't, we'll find out. All right? So, uh, to start with this, we have to create a project. Okay? Um, to, uh, I'm going to go through it with you. We're going to do it one by one. So the very first thing you need to do is to click on File, New, and then Project. Take a look at right side. It says Control Shift N. Every single common thing that you do, it has a shortcut key. So if you want to create a new thing, instead of this, you could just say Control Shift, hold it, and press N. So get used to that. It, it, it's helpful. Mouse is very slow. So you do that, and it comes up. Now, depending on how you have installed Visual Studio, if you go at do the Visual Studio at home, the way I told you, the only thing that you're going to see over here will be Visual C++ and nothing else. What you have over here, I don't know how many things are listed over there. What you are interested in is Visual C++. Why C++ and not C? Because C++ is a superset of C language. They created the C language, then they added one feature to it, they called it C++. They are essentially the same language, same syntax and everything. One is object-oriented, the other one is not. What is object-oriented? We don't care. We just know C++ is superior to C, and because of that fact, every single C program can be compiled with a C++ compiler, because C++ compiler has a C compiler in its belly. 
all you need to do is to identify that the file you created is a C file, not a C++ file. Automatically, it's going to switch to C and compile it as a C program. You okay with that? Questions one, two, sold. Okay, so we have this. Now, what you need to do, you need to expand that visual C++ schmiggly dingy over there. So let's open it up. And we have several things over here. What you are interested in is Windows Desktop. Okay? Let me see if there is a Windows Desktop for you. Yes, there is Windows Desktop. And the last thing that you have over there is Windows Desktop Wizard. Okay? That's what you need to click on. Now click on that. And click OK. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Back, 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 back. One more time. File, new, project, Windows desktop. Wait for me over there. I forgot to mention something. So everybody cancel them back to this window. Everybody's in this window. Are we all in this window? Are we? Are we? All right. Now, remember I was talking about solution being a set of 50 different projects? Probably. On your computers, the third option over here, you see it says create a directory for solution, that is available. You have to make sure you uncheck it. Why? Because you only want one project. You don't want to create five projects in a solution. So you have to remember from now till probably the end of, no, probably in system six, in six semester, you're going to create a solution. But when you are doing system analysis. But now that you're doing languages, I, even up to, I don't know, uh, probably semester four that you're doing INT 422, you're still going to do this. So remember, this is always off. If you don't do that, then it's going to create a nested directory, a directory inside a directory, a folder inside a folder, assuming you want to create many projects. So that has to be unchecked. Then, next thing is this. Location, 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 okay? Click on Browse. In your case, you can use Drive T. Drive T is thaw space. It's an, it's an empty directory at the end uh, that if you're, uh, it's, uh, it doesn't get mixed up with anything. So just a little place that you can put your stuff in it, okay? So, are you okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, so you can go to Drive T over there and just say select folder. So it uses root of T. In your situation at home, you may have and will have a directory for IPC144. And in that one, you're going to have a subdirectory created for labs. And so you decide where you want to put it. In my case, I'm going to put it in the folder of the repository because I want to post all these things on GitHub, right? So I am going to select Seneca, the folder that I have, IPC144. Then I'm going to go, you see this? I cloned this one from GitHub and I'm going to go to SHH that is yours, and I'm going to select folder. So the project is going to get created in that directory. In your case, it's T column backslash. That's it. You are doing it in root of T. Anybody wants my help on this? Yeah. All right. So, so we don't need this. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Windows desktop. Wizard. And... In here, we're going to go to Browse. In here, we're going to go to T. We're going to oh, select a okay. folder. And now we are at this stage. Awesome. All right? Are we OK? Everybody's OK? Perfect. I don't know why yours has that extra thingy over there. Solution name. Hmm. Very, very curious. Oh, because you already created it, my friend. Yeah, yeah. I, when you yeah. said stop, I already clicked okay. it. <laughs> OK, so let's just close this. Close solution. Where is it? You are do, creating multiple, multiple, actually you are creating multiple solutions. Wow, that's like very fancy. Okay, <laughs> I'm trying to see how to close this. Uh, Maybe I can close uh, it right up there. No, let yeah. me just, it should be here saying, uh, clean, analyze, remove, yes. Oh, and this one, oh, close solution. Uh, let's file, close solution. There you go, close solution. No, I don't want you to save anything anyway. Very good, awesome. we are on black. Thank so you. file, okay. new, 
project, Windows Desktop, Desktop Wizard, uncheck, browse to T, select folder, and now we are at this stage. All right? <clears throat> so, now that we are at that stage that we want to select, now in here, <clears throat> say I want to, let's call this demo. So we want to have a demonstration. It's not a lab or anything. We just want to do a demo. So we're going to call that demo. You are going to write DEMO as demo with capital D. Everything, it, remember, Windows is backwards compatible with dinosaurs time. That's why it's not case sensitive. Very bad. All the other operating systems that are worth of being an operating system, they are case sensitive. Get used to it. When I say demo with capital D, make sure you actually make it capital D. In here, if it's lowercase and capital, it would work. But when you move it to matrix, matrix is Linux, it's case sensitive, it's not going to work anymore. So remember, follow the cases that you see. And one thing that I have to mention about programming, you have to be, you have to be, you have to have that uh, a problem that lots of people have. You must be obsessive. You have to have obsessive compulsive. You have to have compulsive on what you do on your uh, on your work. When I tell you something, it has to be followed to the point. Programming is not forgiving. Like if I told you put a dot and then a slash, don't say okay. I'm just gonna put a slash. Who cares about a dot? That dot's gonna ruin everything if you don't put it. It's very important to be obsessive on the work that you do to the point. It's extremely important, all right? Now, let's continue. So I'm going to mention 01 demo. Why do I do that? Because I want all the lectures that I do gets uh, automatically sorted by the number of se session that I have. But you're just going to put demo. So I'm going to say 01-demo, OK? <clears throat> so you're just going to write demo with capital D. And you're going to click on OK and wait for me. All right? A dialog box is going to get open that has many things, OK? You have to make sure nothing is checked over there. So first, uncheck everything. And that's important, too. First, uncheck everything, and then check empty project. If your dialog box matches to mine, then you can click on OK. Which one already exists? Oh, there's a demo on the Hmm, interesting. Oh. <laughs> Let's browse. No, we just see that's a lowercase one. Somebody already did it in another class. See, it's a good point. The gentleman came over here. There is something already on drive T. Another important point that is not related to C. It's related to all subjects that you are taking at Seneca. When you are using the computers over here. You are responsible to delete your work from it. If you do your project in here and you go and the work is not deleted, somebody else comes and picks your project, puts your name or his name on it, and gives it to me, you will be penalized as cheating. And you are not even aware of it. OK? Be careful. You have to protect your work. You have to protect your data. OK? When you're done with whatever you have, not today because we're just doing stuff, but when you are doing your assignment and stuff, make sure after you're done, you put it somewhere safe and delete it from a computer. Don't trust resetting the computer, although it is supposed to wipe everything up. But as you see, there is something left over here. And it was coincidentally called demo, so he couldn't create it. All right? So, so cancel. Now we have demo, and I'm going to go OK. And go OK. All right? All right, so we are all OK. So make sure everything's unchecked and you have empty project. And then we're going to continue after that. Give me two seconds. Yes, see, apparently previous class, whoever it was, was doing the same demo thingy. Delete. <laughs> so if you already have demo in, in uh, drive T, select folder, we are good. OK. Uncheck and check empty project. OK. Now, if you have exact match, you have the same problem? OK. You can click on OK and wait for me. Your resolution is extremely. You did that on purpose? Hmm. Something's wrong. Let's see. Uh, can you come log in on this computer? Anybody tried this computer? 
No. Okay, just log in on this computer, see if you can get into it. And when you get into it, I'm going to bring you up to speed, okay? <clears throat> you can completely log off over here so it doesn't complain. Okay, I'll have a better way to uh, turn it off. There we go. Click on OK and wait for me. Three years later, it's going to create the solution for you and the project in it. Okay? Now, if you forgot where you put this thing, you can always right click on the name of your project and click on open folder in File Explorer. That becomes very handy when I ask you, move your files to matrix now. Sometimes, I don't know why students do, do this, they bring five copies of the same thing and start anything like that. I have no idea why. They do it. And then when they put it, they, when, when they want to submit the work, they submit the wrong one. All, if you want to submit what you're working on, the safest way is to right click on the name of the project and click open uh, file in Explorer. And after you do that, it actually opens and shows where it is. Now, why did I do that? I wanted to show you something in here. This is the directory that your project is in. And these are the things, subdirectories, that it says it has in your project. Do you see a directory over here called header files? Do you see a directory called source files or resource files? No. So all the things that you see over here are virtual directories. They are directories, they are file structure that Visual Studio creates it itself. And they are actually kept in these two files. Name of the project.vcxproj, name of the project.vcxproj.filters. Okay? So these two files are the files that only files that you need to carry with your program so you can open Visual Studio with everything set already in it. There are 55,000 files that are going to get created. Okay, remember I told you, Visual Studio is like going shopping for a carton of milk with a 20 ton, uh, I don't know, truck. It's, it's, it, it's too many things over here that you don't need. So when you are moving your stuff, you want to put it on a memory stick, these are the two files that you pick up. Okay, now let me take a look at it. Yes, on the computers over here, you actually see the extension. You know that this is called an extension, right? This is file name, this is extension. The extension over here is actually visible. Computers at home that you buy, it doesn't show you that. Am I correct, sir? Oh, so you set it up. You're a good boy. All right. Uh, Windows likes to hide extensions and then writes the type over here. VC++ project, VC++ filter. It writes the type for it. I don't like that. As a programmer, you need to see the file as whole to see exactly what it is. Give me two seconds, I'll come to you. Or you, yeah. So what you need to do, you don't need to do it now. It's for home, for your home computers. On home computers, and if you forget, don't worry. It's in the video. I put it in the video, and, it, and it's being recorded now, too. So you click on View. You click on Options. You click on View again in Options. In here, uncheck Hide Extensions for nine known file types. Always have that unchecked. You are going to be computer programmers. You need to know what the name of the file is, the complete name of the file, and nothing should be hidden from you. All right? Are we okay down to here? Let's continue. Oh, before we continue, let me see what's going on here. Yes. Yeah, who cares? Doesn't matter. No, no, you have to click on the top. Ta-da. OK, but it doesn't matter. I told you, there are going to be many things getting created. User, schmoozer, whatever, we don't care. The only thing, the only two files that we need is vcxproj, VCX project filters. The rest, garbage. We don't need them. And as we go, you're gonna, as we continue, you're going to see things are going to even get more messy in that directory. Now, right click on source files, click on add, and then new item. As you see, it's control shift A. Yes.
you try to run anything? Okay. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, let's close the solution and recreate it. Something is wrong in here. Solution Explorer. Did you create anything? No. Did you go through new project? Did you do this? Did you do this? Yeah, I created parts of the new project. Okay, so let's stop wizard. Where else? T. Let's delete mm -hmm. demo. I want to create a new one. Select folder. Oh, browse. We don't want. Select folder. Type demo, please. Click OK. Empty project. OK. And that's it. Okay. I don't know what happened. OK, right click on source files, add new item. OK? So, and then a dialog box opens. OK? And this dialog box is where you're going to create the file in which you're going to write your C programs. OK? Now, as you see, there is no C file. They're all C++, right? We don't care. Just come down here where it says source.cpp. OK? Type my demo.c. No C++, no CPP. My demo.c and hit enter. My demo dot C and hit enter, or hit OK or something. Anybody needs help with that? Are you up to speed or do you want help? You're good. Okay. Are we okay with this? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Beloved friend, what have you done? <laughs> I said close. That's why I said close everything. Remember that? Properties, property manager, everything. Close everything. The only thing you need is Solution Explorer. That's all you need. And do like this. And now you can bring it over here and put it at left. And now you can do it like this. And now we have something that human beings can work with it. All right. OK. So are we OK? If by mistake you end Solution Explorer, don't call the police. You simply go to View in here, and you click on Solution Explorer. There you go. Or so you put Control-Alt-L, OK? So all right, that's that one. Are we OK with this? Now let's write our first C program. The first thing you're going to write is hashtag number sign include. And as to type inc, you will see it actually shows you the option. So you go, do you see? You, that, you see that it actually puts include over there? It helps you with it. You can actually press tab, and it completes it for you. That's called IntelliSense. It's one of the things that all the IDEs, most of the IDEs have. They, they, they actually go through the library of the language that you're using, and they pick up the stuff and help you with it. Then space, and then less than. And as you put less than, it automatically puts the greater than after. You have to put it, but it puts it for you. Type stdio.h. That's standard input output header file. Stdio, and don't call it studio.h. Yes, it's standard input output.h. Always learn to name the abbreviations properly. It's good for your health. You are going to the class. Nobody wants to write the class. The first one. Uh huh. Now type over here, my demo dot C. Coming. Coming, coming. Dot C. Hit enter or add. And yeah, it's gonna seriously, it's gonna tap that long. Let's shake the monitor and make it goes faster. No? There you go. See that worked. 
See, I, I teach you tricks. Okay. <laughs> yes. What do you think is called when it fills it in? Intelligent or intelligent? Intellisense. Okay. <clears throat> it's intelligence, and you can call it magic. All right. Anyways, so are we okay with this? All right. Now we're going to write int, I-N-T. That's an integer, by the way. Why? Because the sky is high. Okay. And then you're going to write main, open parentheses, and you write void. Void means nothing. Okay. Open the curly bracket. Hit enter so it comes to new line. Type return zero and semicolon. Now, okay. After void, you can hit the right arrow. Say open curly bracket. Open curly bracket. Open curly bracket. It's right side of P. Okay. Shift and whatever is right side of P. You type that so you, and you hit enter. When you do it, can you tell me what is the difference between what you see on my screen and what you see on your screen? I want to see if you are the program. I told you you have to be obsessive with stuff that I told you. No, it's not. Completely different than what you have. Yes. Continue, continue. You're fine. Return zero, semicolon. Space zero. Space zero, semicolon. No, no, you don't need to change anything. I didn't ask you to change anything. Let it be, okay? I just want you to, I want you to tell me what is the difference between the two programs. Do you have that thing that says up there behind void instead of the third line? To open the statement. You mean include standard input output? Just, just give me line number. Give me line number. There's a line number at the left. Yeah. Which line number? No, it's, it is, no, this is fine. You have an extra space, by the way, an empty line. So, no, that's not the case. Thank you. My return stunts, starts at the second column. Yours starts at four. Doesn't it? Where is the R in your thing? It's under M, correct? Where is my R? Under T. See, you have to be that precise when you are programming. Okay, I'm telling you what's the difference. Well, nothing, exactly. It's not the same. You have two extra spaces. It will work. It's a free format language. Spaces are all ignored. But I'll tell you how to fix that. Okay, let's do it together. All right? I set the tab to two characters. You can do it two or three. Don't make it four. Or make it four if you want to, whatever. But I'll tell you how to change it. Okay? Click on Tools, and then Options. Close the environment, and open the text editor. And click on and Expand All Languages. And finally, click on Tabs. Go up, up, close environment so it's closed now expand text editor the fourth one is text editor okay and then expand all languages and then click on tabs and wait for me tabs okay all right so this is where you are let me just uh, bring it down so you see you are selecting the four so you collapse environment Expand text editor, all languages, and tabs. When you're at home on your Visual Studio, do it before creating any type of project. So as soon as Visual Studio opens blank, do that. So it applies it to every new project that you create. Okay? Why do we do this? Remember I told you that pro like no one likes tab character because the size is different. Remember that? We want to fix that in here. We don't like tab character. We want to, when we, whenever tab is going, we want it to, to insert spaces instead for us. So as you see, my tab size is set to two. Set it to something that you like, both of them, tab and indentation. Set them at the same number, but put something, whatever you want, three, four, two, 
whatever. Three is good, whatever. And click on insert spaces and smart. We always would like smart stuff, okay? And then you can click on OK. Those who selected four will see no change. Those who selected two will see that it goes back and stands on two. So it becomes like mine, okay? So from now on, whenever you create a new line, automatically it's going to indent it. Whenever you create a new scope, whenever it automatically indents it with two spaces and it won't put a tab character in there, okay? Just for you to know. That video is up already. You, if you go over there, it tells you how to check, uh, set the tab. Yeah. I have no idea. No, I'm kidding. It's just, <laughs> it just, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the text editor becomes more helpful. Let's put it that way. Okay. <laughs> and by the way, I have no idea. You're going to hear from me a lot. I have many things that I don't know, and I'm learning after 20 years of teaching this. So in no way, no prof standing over here knows everything, and I guarantee that I'm going to make some very good mistakes, and I'm going to come and apologize the next day. So be ready for what I just said many, many times. Now, the next thing we want to do, go put your cursor after the curly bracket and drawing two, hit enter so you open one line, and in that line you type Print F, print F, and then parentheses, double coat, and in that one type, what do I write? Type. Now nah, that's that's cliche. Let's uh, hee haw, okay, and then put exclamation mark and a new line, okay. Or whatever you like, write a message, I don't know. Anything makes you happy. <laughs> and then at the end of the statement at line three, you have to put a semicolon and get used to it. Semicolon in C language is full stop in English. It ends a statement. If you don't write it, C language does not know that you're done in that line. Every single line, every single statement, correction, is ended with a semicolon. Backslash in. Where's backslash? Above enter. Yeah. Backslash n. Backslash n is new line. Anything that starts with a backslash, it means it's a special character. It doesn't mean what you type. It, it doesn't mean what you type. It means uh, what that escape sequence is. So if you put backslash n, that means new line. If you put backslash t, that means tab. If you put Backslash B, it means go back one character. If you put backslash, what else? We need to know. Uh, backslash F is form feed, but that's for, anyways. Anyway, when you put backslash, it means escape sequence. It means interpret what that character means. If that doesn't mean anything, it just prints it. So if I put over there backslash W, if it doesn't mean anything, then it's just going to print W. Yes. Then you put two backslashes, all right? So if so, because backslash means the next character has to be interpreted to something. Wise question: How what if I want to print a backslash? Then you put two backslashes back to back. Okay, that means one backslash. So remember, in C language, and hence in Linux, you put two backslashes. Okay, two backslashes mean one backslash if you want if you want to print it. All right. After you do this. Hold the control key and press F5. Don't type hold the control key and <laughs> hold the control key and press F5. And three years later, you'll see all the cool stuff is going to happen to run your program, and you're going to see a hee haw got printed, and that's your beautiful program. All right, you have written your first C program or you have made your first mistake. Give me a second. Oh, if, if, if a dialog box opens over there and that dialog box says, the project is out of date, yada, yada, yada. It means the project is out of date. Would you like me to compile it? Duh, yes. Because of that fact, at the bottom there's a check mark. You see that? Check that. Do not show this thing to me again and click yes. 
It means anytime I want to compile, compile the damn thing. Don't keep asking me. And you won't bleep. You will keep clicking that yes without checking that check mark for nine semesters over here. I don't know why. It's not, it's not clear to me. Okay? Make sure you check that so you don't have to keep saying yes. Um, and it runs. Are we okay with this? Yes, sir. You made the first mistake? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> Number three. What is missing over there? I said every statement in C language ends with semicolon. <laughs> okay, good. Now you can go control the five. Hmm? Oh, it's the under, under see, he just did click. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you have to. <laughs> okay, so I close it. Change the thing, so separate the he and a ha. Put a space between, so the code changes. Control F5. Now check it. Okay. Do not show this to me again. Yes, there you go. And it's not going to show it to you again anymore. Of course, when you start your computer next time, it's going to ask you because it removes all the settings. Are we okay with this? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is what uh, uh, Visual Studio is for your programs to write, and you're going to do this 55,000 times in the next few semesters, okay? Uh, there's one more thing that you need to add at the top over here, and I always forget what it is, so I copied from the previous things that I have written. So let me cheat and go back somewhere, mm, say, no, 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 I'm not going to go there. Uh, let me go back some notes archive, say, here in any program from anywhere. There you go, this is the one. Get used to put this thing at the top. Why? Because the sky is high, okay? Memorize it. There you go. SRT secure no warning. What is that? The, and if you don't, the thing is that if you don't type it properly, it won't give you an error, okay? You'll see that it's, something's not gonna work. It's very important to make sure that it's exactly that. What does that do? It tells the compiler, do not show me warnings for security, okay? There, every single new version of C is trying to make the language more secure. So the primitive standard input-output library stuff is now considered unsecure. And because of that fact, your program is not going to compile, okay? Adding that thing at the top means, hey, I know this is not secure, please run it, and it's going to run it, okay? Uh, uncheck, check the thing so it doesn't give you that message again. Okay, I, remember I told you? It happened now. All right, are we okay? Are we okay? One. Oh, I'm not going to take it off. It's going to be there. And, and it's, um, and let me show you something. Yes. It has to be exactly that. Oh, you mean why is it not red? Yeah. Hit enter or go to the next line. There you go. <laughs> Remember, IntelliSense needs for your statement to finish to be able to see what's in there. Now, I want to show you something. Now, take a look. I'm going to go over here, all right, in, uh, in notes, SHA, SHH. And I'm going to write, oh, now take a look at the demo directory. Now I have a debug. It has lots of stuff in it that I do not need. Okay? The debug thing, you don't need to even look for it. It's just files that it needs for debugging. So if I want to put all these things on a memory stick and take it to someone else's house or some other computer or bring it to school, all you need is my demo.c. VCX proj filters, and this one in a directory. So you copy these things. The rest, you don't need. Don't put too many stuff, okay? That's one. Number two. I'm going to right click over here, go toward this git. Oh, and I'm going to say add. I'm going to add these things to the repository. I'm going to commit it, and I'm going to say uh, first demo. And I'm going to say commit. It's committed to my computer. 
Now I'm going to say push. And I'm going to say OK. Now it's pushed to GitHub. Oh, it says it didn't exist because it's changed. Let me just do something. Because something was changed over there before, it says first apply the changes. So I'm bringing all the changes to my computer first. Now push. And I'm going to go OK and see what happened. Ha. Huh. Now take a look at, go open your browser and look at GitHub. Seneca 144-100, Open Notes SHI, your section. You will see that there's a 01 demo over there. And you will see that there is mydemo.c, and that's the program I have written. But if you notice, because I did not save that use secure warning thingy, it's not here now. So what do I do? I'm going to come over here and I save it. OK? Now that I save it, I'm going to go back in here. You see it's red now? It means there is something changed that is not in the repository. I'll right click, and I'm going to say commit. I'm going to say added that secure warning thingy. I'm going to say commit. That's just a comment. And I'm going to say push, and I'm going to say OK. Goes back to, the, to GitHub. Three years later, if I refresh this, you'll see now Probably everybody is right now doing it. GitHub is, there you go. Now it's up there. All right? You got it? So this is what it is. Every single thing that I write in class will be on GitHub. You can take it, copy it, do whatever you want to do. I'm going to tell you today how to get it using Git. And install Git at home on your computers. It's a beautiful thing, and it helps you a lot uh, for, the, for uh, uh, this subject. Are we OK down to here? Any problem? One, it, pre, it, it allows the computer to run the old commands of C that are considered unsecure now. OK? For printf, printf is not considered unsafe. But we, if we had a scanf, scanf's job is to read. OK? Uh, you want to add that read over there to see how, how it works, just, just to see. Right? So let's just add something to it. So let's say So I'm going to write a very simple program now. So at, now you see I have this is demo.c, right? All right? Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove this. So I'm going to right click over here and I'm going to say remove. When I remove it says, you want to delete it? I'm going to say, no, just remove it from the solution. It is still on a hard drive, but it's not in my project anymore. So I'm going to add something new. So in here, I'm going to say, right click, add, new item. And I'm going to say 03, say, age in months, dot C. So I'm going to write a program that is going to tell me what is my age in months. I'm going to say I'm 52 years old. It's going to tell me how many months I am. It's not going to be precise. It's just a test. All right? So secure no warnings first. Then I'm going to say you don't need to do this. If you want to do it, fine. I'm just going to demonstrate. It's going to be up there. If you want to do it, fine. If you don't, it doesn't matter. So in, uh, uh, I'm going to say include standard input output dot h int main void return zero as you see this is a blank thing i can actually run this when i run this program what's going to happen nothing because i didn't do anything that's the smallest c program you can write a program that does nothing all right anyways so i want to get someone's age an age is an integer number a number that goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm 5 years old. I'm 10 years old. I'm 50 years old, right? So I'm going to call it int age. OK? That's an integer. Now I'm going to say printf. Please enter your age. And I'm not going to go to new line because I want them to see what they are entering. So the first thing, remember the task that we were talking about? First task, my program is asking, what is your age? And then I'm going to say scanf the keyboard for an integer and put it in the address of age. Remember I told you that C language is an English language? <laughs> now when I, when I say it, 
It's when I write it, it's a completely different story. That's Ganef double quote percent e double quote comma ampersand h. But when you read it, it's scan, format it, an integer, and put it in address of h. That's what it means. Okay. So it gets it. Now I'm gonna say printf. You are this many months old. Exclamation marks. For some reason, I'm always surprised at the end of the things. Huh. Okay. And then in here, I'm going to say age multiply by 12. Because if it's 52, you're 52 multiplied by 12 months, right? I know it's not precise. Don't tell me. You have to go for the date and then the calculation. We don't want a very simple thing, right? So that's my program. I have written the program. Now I write in this beautiful program of mine. Control F5. I run the program. What is your age? 52. Hit enter. You are 624 months old. Ta-da! I have written my first program. Now I want to debug this program, see how it works. How? If you go to debug, you will see there is something over here called Step into, step over. Step into means go into a command and analyze it. Step over, it means just run it. I want to see what's going on. And that's F10. F10 is your friend for now. Okay? So if I want to run it step by step, I'm going to press F10. And as soon as I press F10, it compiles and you see there's a yellow arrow over there. It means it's about to run this line. Now, I'm going to bring this over here, put it at left and put the output at right so I can see what's going on. I'm pressing F10 again. Oh, sorry. I'm pressing F10 again. Now, if I bring my mouse on age, what is inside? Look at that number. Yeah, and you see that number? Can anybody read that number for me? I don't know. I can't read it. <laughs> it's a huge, gigantic, garbage number. Why? Because in memory, there is an integer, and I didn't put anything in it. Whatever it was in memory before, it's in there, and that's some garbage number. I don't care what it is. Okay, next thing is the next line that I'm running. So I'm going to run the next line. And in that line, it's going to say, please enter your age. Please enter your age. Right? Let me make it a little bigger so we can see. Uh, properties. Make it 24. Okay, there you go. Please enter your age. And now it's about to start scanning the keyboard. I press, and still age has garbage in it. Take a look because it's not reading it yet. I press F10 again. If you press F11, it's going to go into guts of scanf and show how scanf works. Believe me, you don't want to do that. OK? So don't do that. F10 again. Now, as you see, it's not going there. It's actually here, because it's waiting for me to enter something, right? And I'm going to say, I'm 12 years old. And I hit Enter. As soon as I hit Enter, remember command line? What was the command line? You write something, you hit enter. As soon as I hit enter, it flushes all the information into scanf. And scanf starts scanning what the user entered. What did the user enter? One and a two. Don't say 12. One and a two. Then it starts getting a one and a two, analyzes it, and it says, you told me an integer, so it's a 12. OK? And it reads it. And puts it where? In the address of age. What does it mean? It actually goes into age. Right? Now, I hit enter. And if I look at age now, it has 12 in it. Ta-da! OK? Now it's going to multiply 12 by 12. If I want to know what it is, I'll highlight both. And I look, and it is 144. When I told you an IDE helps you write program, that's what I meant. You can actually do things with it, see what is the content of stuff, and run it step by step to know what's going on. You can walk through your code. We're going to go on Matrix right now, do the exact same thing, and so, wow, I can't get any help with it. It's pure, raw programming with no help whatsoever. Command line compiling, OK? I know lots of people want to be hardcore. I want to, you know, I want to use my nose to hit the keyboard. OK, I know you want to do that, fine. But, but it's always good 
to learn how to use tools so you can be faster. If you want to be hardcore, everybody's going to be faster than you. You're not going to be able to do anything. So learning tools, very important. Anyways, so the message is going to say you are, per, what was percent D for? Integer. So it's going to grab this integer and insert it where percent D is. You know what's the name of that thing? We call it placeholders. So percent D, percent essentially means a placeholder is coming. Because it's printing, it gets the first thing that you have after comma and puts it in percent D. So it's an integer. It puts an integer. In here, you are saying, I want to read an integer. So it's reverse. It gets an integer and puts it in H, right? And that's why scanf needs an address, because it needs to know where to put it. But printf doesn't need an address because you are giving the value to it. Yes? Listen to what I'm saying, OK? Scanf means scan formatted an integer and put it in address of age. What I say, I mean it. Obsessive compulsive disorder. That's what all I want everybody to have. Listen to what I'm saying and apply to it. So when I say address of age, I do not want to hear anybody to say ampersand age. I'll kill you. <laughs> ampersand means address of, not ampersand. Remember, yes, sir? Use your opera voice. Ha, 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 loud. You ask that question again, I'm going to come. <laughs> it's a pointer, but do not talk. You did not listen what he said, OK? He is an evil person trying to conv confuse everyone, OK? <laughs> Don't listen to him, all right? It's address of age, OK? That's what we are saying, all right? All right, so. Now if I run this, it's going to actually print, you are 144 months old. Are we OK with this? OK, this is actually very advanced for you. <laughs> I just demonstrated for you how this thing works. As simple as that, all right? Are we OK with this? Are we OK one? Are we OK two? Sold. Now, go to Start menu or go to your My Apps and find Putty. P-U-T-T-Y, OK? P-U-T-T-Y. Or you can go to Start menu and type PuTTY and write the one. Hopefully, they have one installed on it because it's a very small program. And this will come up. PuTTY. Oh, not that one. No, no, my programs. My programs, not, uh, not Google. <laughs> oh, you're in there? Forget it. Come to Start menu. Type PuTTY. P-U-T-T-Y. T-T-Y. And putty, not putty gen, type select putty. Okay. That's up. OK, everybody open putty? Did you open putty? It said error. It said error? OK, if it says error, click on start menu and type putty, P-U-T-T-Y. Then don't select the first one. The one that is P-U-T-T-Y, the first one that you see, an application, click on that one, and it's going to open it for you. OK, start menu, start menu. Type putty, P-U-T-T-Y, T-T-Y. Now click on the first putty that comes over there as a whole. All right. We are all OK? Do, are we all OK at the, at, the, at the putty thingy? OK, I'm coming. OK, where you see it says uh, a host uh, name or IP address, underneath type matrix.senecacollege.ca, and don't do anything other than that. Your computer is weird. What's going on here? I don't know. Seriously. <laughs> weird computer you have. You're okay with Putty? You're okay? Yes, yes, ma'am. Um, yeah, your computer is weird as his. Something's wrong with some of the computers over here. That's the one. Your resolution is huge. That's good for your eyes, though. <laughs> Are we OK? Are we OK? Are we OK? Are we OK, Mr. Pointer reference? OK. All right. All right. So matrix.senecacollege.ca, and then wait for me. Make sure SHH is, SSH is selected. So matrix.senecacollege.ca. Uh, all right? 
All right, it is okay. Now click on open. It says login as. Put your Seneca ID in there only. No email, shmemail. Just Seneca ID. Mine is Fardad.Soleimanlu. Or let me go with my student and go F Soleimanlu. Okay? And hit enter. And then it asks for your password. Put your password. If I remember my password. There you go. Remember, in command line, no news is good news. If you see a thing comes up and doesn't tell you anything, it's yay, life is beautiful. All right? No news, good news. No, no, Seneca College, one word. College. College. That's college. You have an extra A? Uh huh. E G E. Dot C A. Click on open. Oh, if, if, a, if a window comes in with security alert, yes. You've got to say yes. All right? Because you're putting my, path, my user ID over there. Is that you? Yeah, it's mine. We're very close. <laughs> OK. OK. All right. So it's, it's the email password that you have. Is that, is, that, is that correct spelling? No, I forgot the number one. Ah, OK, OK. So. Yeah, you can do some. Ah, uh, too late. I want to say you can do something else, but you closed it already. Okay, so uh, open party again. All right. What happened? Is that your? Is that? Are you sure that that's your ID? You don't have a one or two or anything missing somewhere. That's perfectly yours. Okay. Have you ever logged into your to your to your account? And now it doesn't working. Okay, session is closed anyway, so let's try again. Let's right click over here and say restart session. Log in one more time. Oh, that's why you had the caps lock on. Are you sure? Yeah, but for your password. Everything is capitalized in your password. Oh, okay. <laughs> Tell me what is your password. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh. Another thing, it doesn't show you that it's typing because it's your password. Okay. <laughs> and hit enter at the end of it. If it doesn't accept, then nothing happens. Wait, wait, wait for it. Oh. Okay, do it one more time because you already punch it, punched a few things. Hit enter. Ta-da, you're in. And if you tried a few times and you couldn't, it's going to tell you, hey, somebody tried to log into your account a few times ago and it didn't work. Matrix.SenecaCollege.ca. Matrix.SenecaCollege.ca. No, no, no. Just, just open. All right, that's it. Now your user ID and password. Anyways, if you could log in, good. If you couldn't, just watch me. Okay. Now, let me see if they installed what I asked them to do. Yes, they did. You can type NLED. NLED is neat little editor. One of colleagues of mine that is retired now uh, wrote this long time ago. It's a very simple editor, okay? Type NLED and it's going to come up. A text editor is going to open, okay? And now you've got to type the exact same. You've got to actually start writing code. Now in here you're going to say include standard input output dot h. You see no color, nothing. Int main void. See, no space, nothing. So I have to actually, you have to one, two, I have to do it manually. In here, I'm going to say uh, printf uh, my first program on matrix backslash n. Return zero. And escape goes to command mode. Then I hit X and it goes out. In ULI, they're going to teach you how to do Y, V, Y. Pardon me? Zoom in? You mean you cannot see that small? Why? <laughs> OK, so let me see if I can actually do it. Uh, session settings, uh, appearance, change, 
20 and let's make it bold. Better? Okay. So now, um, now that I'm in that, so, so I have this, include yada, 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 whatever I've written. Uh, when you push escape, it goes off again. I push escape again, it goes into command mode. Now, if I, if I don't know what command to use, put question mark, it gives you the list of all the commands that you can use, okay? Escape again, goes out. And if you see, it has delay because it's matrix, it takes time. It's a computer, it's a remote computer, it's connected to that one. So I'm gonna say escape, and this time I'm gonna say X, it means exit and save, and it's gonna ask me for file name. Now in here I'm gonna say, uh, uh, test.c and enter. So test.c is created. Okay? To clear the screen, I'm going to say clear. You don't need to do it with me. I'm just, I'm just doing it so you see what are we involved with. Okay? And then after this, I'm going to, I want to compile it, so I have to say gcc dash wall. It means I want all the warnings on. And then I'm going to say test dot c and I'm gonna say please name the output as test and I hit enter okay could not open file in directory yada yada error what is that let me see didn't I name it test dot c test dot c GCC test.c. Oh. Oh. GCC dash wall. TC. Oh, because there's a. Oh, the reason was that there was already a test that I had. So it, try, it, tries, it tried to create the executor with the name of test. I already had a text test over there. So let me, let me do it again. Okay. Let me do it again. Let me do it again. Okay, so GCC dash wall test dot C dash O. I'm going to call it my test. So the name of the executable will be my test. Now I hit enter. Done. No news. Good news. It means it compiled. Now if I say my test, it's going to say my first program on me. It actually compiled. So that's what it was. And there is no way I can go through it in step by step and see what's going on. I could, but that's another software that we have to use with this. And, so, and it's not visual at all. It's just text as, as what you see. And if I have an error over here, so if I go NLED test.c, test.c, and let's say in here I'm going to say, hoo -hoo, and I put a semicolon, something that C doesn't understand. Escape X, I get out, I compile it again. Now it's going to say, error, hoo hoo undeclared first use in the function, and it puts what that's hoo hoo, and it says note, and it tells you it's in column four of line three. Okay, or column, or column three of line four. I don't remember that. We've got to see. So that's what it is. So it's one, two, so column four mm, on line three, I think. Now let's go to NLED. So, no, column three of line four, okay? So it is, as you see over here, this is where it is. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, column three of line four, and I'll see where the error is, and I'll fix it, and so on and so forth, all right? So this is how it is. You, uh, <clears throat> you must read the, the error messages properly, <clears throat> see exactly what it is. It explains which function the problem is in, what was the thing that had problem? What was the nature of the error? Exactly points where it is, and it keeps going like that. Are we okay with this? Yes. Oh, you want me to come over there? All right. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't give you a break. I told you. You have to remind me of giving you a break. <laughs> Remember that? I keep forgetting. Yes. Um, if you're sure that your password is correct and you're sure that this is your username, you put capital. 
it's matrix, it's Linux, it's user, user uh, case sensitive. So we'll do like this. I'm going to say new session. All right, let's close that one. Start from the beginning. Yes. My test dot C. Dot C. Yeah, dot C. Dot C. And hit enter. And we have to write, uh, we have to write like dash dot C, uh, like O my test dot C. Dash O. No, so just enter. Oh, you'll see that. We'll don't worry. When you, in your first workshop, we're going to go through all this, okay? So don't worry about it. You're going to see ad. It is on the video, so you can go check it out. Double check and try it from home. Okay, yes. Still doesn't work? Oh, you're in. So you, oh, you want to? It's not important. You don't need to do it now. I just wanted to demonstrate how it works. For now, stick to Visual Studio. We'll come to that later, okay? I'll show you in ULI. They're going to tell you how to log into Matrix and do all these stuff. They're going to tell you how to use the VI editor, okay? Something that I don't know how to use, <laughs> okay? So you're going to be much superior to me on that, all right? So uh, uh, keep that in mind. Uh, any questions down to here? Again, the videos are not edited. I'm just going to put it raw, as is. So when I'm running and helping someone, you're going to hear all the gibberish that I said. Just try to fast forward and get to the parts that you want to see. Uh, it's going to be under the playlist of yours, and it's going to be shown uh, exactly where it is in the... Uh, in the, um, on uh, uh, YouTube, yes. Escape goes to the command line. X, it means exit and save. And it asks for file name, now put test.c. Hit enter. Wait for five years. Actually, maybe this, that enter doesn't work, does it? There you go. <laughs> that enter doesn't work. <laughs> All right. Now you're out. You have a test.c. You can do gcc dash wall. So the command was again gcc dash wall with capital W. So command is this. Okay. That's the output executable. If you don't put anything, if you don't put anything, gcc compiler by default creates an executable called a dot out. A dot out, you see? So if you don't put the name and just write, and you can even write GCC test.c, that's it. It means don't turn the warnings on. But when you submit it to me, that's how it's done. So make sure you do it the same way. Sometimes you do things that is a warning, it's not an error. It means it still can compile it, but it's not an error. We don't accept that. I want it to be clean, clean. No warning, no errors. All right? Some people will come from programming backgrounds. They think that it's uh, power and being a geek to write a program that has warnings that it works. No. No warnings in a program in our thing. It must be zero warnings, zero errors when you're handing stuff to me. And when you do the submit thingy, the submit command, it's going to work that way. We're going to see it when the time comes. Are we okay? Oh, it's, a, it's just a program. Neat little editor. Okay? <laughs> it's, it's a program somebody wrote. You can use Nano. Nano is another one. Nano test.c. And this one is maybe easier because it shows you what does what underneath. You see? It actually shows you what, how things are on. Uh, get help, exit, write out, justify, read file, where it is, and so on and so forth. So it has some things written over there. Maybe you want to use nano. Either nano, whatever, or an NLED, whatever. Yes. Or VI when you learn how to work with it. Pardon me? You have a question there? One more time? And when you were writing this program on here, mm -hmm. did you put a question mark? Uh, I'm sorry, the extra, extra. Oh, it doesn't matter, whatever. You can oh, actually. Is it needed then, or? And what is the end for again? Address of. We'll come to it. I didn't teach any C. It was just an explanation. There you go. I just put everything over there for you. Okay, escape X. It puts it back out. Escape X. X. Now you have to. No. No, escape. You don't hold escape. You push escape. You wait. Now X. Now X. It's 
Oh, so a finite. So put a finite. Test that C. Test that C. Again, I did not. And enter. Hit enter. Now you have it. Okay. Now, again, what I did right now, I did not expect you to do this. I didn't want you even to do this. I just want to show you how primitive is command line programming. Okay? You're going to use Visual Studio to do it. Then we're going to move it to Matrix. And we're going to exercise over there as the semester progresses over. Okay? Deep breath. When we are coming for next workshop, we're going to work on these things with your wor first workshop. Your first workshop is essentially this. Okay? You're doing this. You're writing one thing. If Probably it's already on. I don't know. Um, any questions? Pardon me? Write the name. Which command? This program, write its name, whatever you called it. Oh. Escape. X. Test.c. Test.c. Enter. Now you have to write GCC. Space. Test.c. .c. Enter. You have an error. You write return. That's a U. Now you have to go back in, fix it, and keep doing it until you don't get an error. Anyways, all right. Any questions? Yeah. Huh? Just, uh, just type NLED test.c. NLED test.c. Yeah. So it opens test.c. Oh, but so whatever, <laughs> whatever it was. Okay. All right. I'm gonna end the recording.